Dr. Albert Sabin, I'm speaking to you from the Hadassah Hebrew University Medical Center in Jerusalem. The very name indicates the important partnership between the university and the Hadassah organization. Hadassah has made a most significant contribution in developing a clinical center in Israel, which then became the University Hospital. In 1924, a year before the Hebrew University was established on Mount Scopus, the American Jewish Physicians Committee had already taken the first step in creating a school of medicine by endowing an institute of microbiology. By the time I first set foot on Mount Scopus as a United States Army medical officer in 1943, that institute had already developed sufficiently to become the nucleus of the future medical school. A few years later, in 1947, everything was set for the inauguration of this medical school. But during Israel's War of Independence, Arab forces cut the road leading to Mount Scopus. The medical center was evacuated to various buildings scattered all over Jerusalem. The opening of the medical school was frozen under the heading of unfinished business. In 1949, the shortage of young doctors prompted the Israel government to request the Hebrew University to open the medical school without delay. In 1952, the first degrees of doctor of medicine were conferred on 63 graduates of the school. In 1965, a long dream was at last realized when the new building of the medical school, even though unfinished, was opened at the medical center in Ain Karen. And that brings me back to the subject of some unfinished business. Hundreds of years, Jewish physicians had made a contribution in and through medical faculties all over the world. Here in Ain Karen, for the first time in Jewish history, Jews have created their own medical school in the land of Israel, using the Hebrew language and with Jewish teachers and students. Professor Moshe Privis will tell you something of its growth and development. The medical school consists today of almost 100 departments and research laboratories in basic clinical and public health disciplines with a full-time personnel of over 400 scientists engaged in teaching and research. Among these facilities, some of which have been made available through the generosity of our friends abroad, are the Hanna and Louise Mintz Teaching Laboratories. The research laboratory is centralized in the Evelyn and Max Low Research Building and the Ted Chenok Virology Laboratory. The medical school has produced 1,000 young graduates and it teaches now some 700 students in medicine, microbiology, medical sciences and public health. These 700 students already have the benefit of many up-to-date facilities at the medical school, such as these carefully designed lecture rooms, which are located on each floor. But there is still much unfinished business to take care of. There are some departments of the medical school still in makeshift quarters in old buildings in Jerusalem, about seven miles away from the medical center. What we still have to do is to bring all of the departments and laboratories together in this building. 
It was designed to provide integrated facilities for teaching and research in 40 departments in a six-year course of study. In student laboratories and research laboratories such as this one, training is provided in the basic medical sciences. The teaching schedule is a rugged 40 hours a week for a 40-week academic year. Many students are married and have children. Most of them have to work hard to make a living while studying. A stipend and loan fund help a bit, but it is not enough. Julius Jarko Medical Library is named for a distinguished New York physician. The stacks contain more than 55,000 books, bound volumes of periodicals, in addition to microfilms and recent issues of 2,000 medical journals. It serves about 4,000 readers, with 18 branches scattered all over the country. Each day, about 200 people use the library's reading room. Numbered among the Israeli graduates and students are about 30 members of the Druze and Arab communities. This young student, Eunice Ibrahim Abu Ravia, made history as the first Bedouin to enroll in the medical school. About 70 of our students have come to the school from the newly independent countries of Africa and Asia. Doctors from these areas preparing themselves for teaching in their own countries also take part in the training of Israel student doctors. The 400 members of the faculty and research staff are drawn from all over the world. They are graduates of 60 universities from 16 different countries. The intensive research programs of the school have paid off not only in improving general health of Israel, but also in raising the quality of the teaching. Israel, by eradication, or bringing under control all endemic infectious diseases, has become an island of health in the Middle East. Its infant mortality rate of 20 per 100,000 is one of the lowest in the world.
and the research laboratories of the school. Significant work is now being carried on in physiology, biochemistry, bacteriology, virology, microbiology, parasitology, pathology, pharmacology, hormones, cancer, organ transplantation, just to mention a few fields. In conjunction with this extensive research and teaching program, a special pool of highly sophisticated and expensive equipment is concentrated and maintained to avoid unnecessary duplication of facilities, equipment, and manpower. magnificent medical school already in existence that you have just seen has not yet been paid for. Millions of dollars are needed to pay the bills. In addition to the unfinished business of finding the money to pay for what has already been constructed, there are departments that are still miles away from the medical center and must be brought home. These are parasitology, public health, experimental neurology and psychology, experimental surgery, experimental orthopedics, isotope research laboratory, history of medicine, and a medical school cannot function without a main auditorium. And this is the spot for it. This great medical center, as almost everything else in Israel, has been and is continuing to be built on faith. A faith that when the time comes to pay the bills, the money will be found. That time is now. And the Jews of the world must join the Jews in Israel to help convert dreams into reality. I appeal to you now, specifically to help in the growth and development of this great medical center in Jerusalem, a center that will benefit not only Israel, but all mankind by its contribution of new knowledge for the elimination of human misery.